about what have you seen out of tight ends so far in this camp and anyone really emerging yet a couple weeks ago? Well, I think at, you know when you start looking at the tight end as a group, I think we are extremely athletic. Um, there's still a bunch of guys that are still learning the position, quite honestly. They're still kind of learning the nuances of blocking inside the box. Um, but I think they've been phenomenal in adjusting to that. I think we're, we're playing very, very physical right now. I think we're playing very, very fast. Um, you know, it's just really developing consistency and, and, and working on being that type of player every single play and not having our ups and downs. Um, as far as everybody emerging right now, I'd say there's two or three guys right now that are really trying to, to bite, scratch, and claw for that starting position. Um, guys like Josh Perkins that have played before and Michael Harbison will have obvious advantages to be able to, to try and step up and take that leadership role, but Darrell Daniels has done some unbelievable things um, this fall camp. So, How different is it not having the ASJ consistent big body? You guys are now more athletic. How different is that with this group compared to the ASJ when he was the main guy? I think Austin just provided you such, he's such a physical specimen. Uh, you know, and you don't really replace guys that hurt 260 pounds, six with six that can run fast. Um, but I think they exhibit the same kind of athleticism on a consistent basis. I think we catch the ball really, really well as a group. It's um, ultimately just coming along in terms of run blocking, you know, those kind of things where we need to really adjust our level because we're not 260 pounds for a couple of the first few guys. Now talk about Josh Perkins. He had, He's had some trials and tribulations in his career going from wide receiver to tight end, uh -huh. being dismissed for those 24 hours. He said he leaned a lot on you. Can you talk about, in your eyes, how big that was for him to come back and then can you just talk about how strong a relationship you guys have over, just between the two? One of the biggest things that I always told, you know, and I tell everybody in my position group, especially during the day of recruitment is, is I'm always going to fight for you. You know, I'm, I'm always going to be their biggest proponent and someone to be able to rely on to talk to, to mentor and, and really try and figure out positives in a lot of negative situations. He made a bad mistake. Um, you know, was that indicative of his character? No, I don't think so at all. Um, but he's learned from it, and he's become, quite honestly, a, a role model for a lot of the younger guys. And it's been cool to really see that progression, to see him grow up, and see him mature. And uh, you know, our relationship has been probably stronger because of going through that trial and tribulation early on. And talk about the depth. You guys have some pretty talented tight ends, mm -hmm. freshmen all the way up to Michael as a senior. Um, can you talk about the, I guess, tight end you, what you sometimes can call it, or what do you, what do you think of the evolution? of tight ends recently at Washington? Well, I think, you know, tight ends are, first of all, they're extremely hard to find. Guys that are that long, that athletic, can catch the ball and are, at the end of the day, have to be offensive line. Um, I think that's a very, very rare specimen to find. Um, but what's been really cool about working at an institution like this with such a rich tradition of tight ends is we know the standard. We've seen Austin play for the last three years um, and, and really just kind of falling back and hearing, you know, guys like Mark Bruner, um, you know, Cam Cleland came around. Um, you know, we've had guys talk to the team to, to really show them, you know, exactly what it is that is expected out of them on a very consistent basis.